Welcome to Sean and Carter Have a Podcast. My name is Sean. And I'm Carter. And Carter, our hashtag SCHP is working, uh, I would say, about 50% of the time. Yes, um, we're, we're, we're breaking in, you know. It used to be just uh, Highway Patrol. Now it's <laughs> Highway Patrol, us, and some strange Spanish. Something that's thing. in Spanish. We don't know. This this guy says it says something like in on it like honestly, much applause for the passing of something. Like I don't know if they're talking about a bill or something, but uh, SCHP is hashtagged right in there. I think that they were just really excited about us in Spain. Oh wow! Yeah. Well. Hola, senors and senoritas. Um, what Sean said. I hola. Don't speak, I don't speak a <laughs> word of Spanish. I know that hola means hello, I guess, but another than Tango that. queso y un burro. Um, I just said I have cheese and a donkey. Uh, just hashtag that SCHP and I'll... <laughs> And, and well, you know, the... you'll absolve it and ignore it like everything else. Yeah, exactly. So, yes, thank you guys for using SCHP uh, to to tweet what you think about the podcast. I think it's working successfully. Let's continue doing it. It's also a handy way for us to review everything that has been tweeted to our attention without having to go back through our mentions like days and days and days. Yes, I'm using uh, a ver- I'm using a new device that I have to, to do this. And I, let me, I'll just say that it's a, a new device, a Carter. New device. Yeah, I have a new device, Sean. Tell us all about it. Oh, I'm going to tell you. About it. You ready for it? I got an iPad too. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> it's shiny and new. Oh, it's so, it's shiny and new and awesome. And so this iPhone 4S thing, jeezy crazy. Uh, I went to the local mall to go to an Apple store. And usually, do you have you ever gone to an Apple store? Um, no, no. So usually, <laughs> okay, that's fine. Isn't that awful? I've never even been to one. Just, a, I mean, well, this is a bad example, what I'm about to say. But usually, you, you just go to an Apple store. You go to one, you walk in, you play with stuff. They've got, it's brilliant how they have them set up. It's just all these really nice, large wooden tables with the devices, with lots of the devices on them. And you can just pick them up and play. Just like, ooh, I'm going to play with an iPad or a MacBook Air or an iPhone. That does sound like something I would enjoy. I'm not sure why I haven't done that. You should do that. And then, and then uh, someone will come over and talk to you about it, and then you end up spending lots of money. <laughs> so, ah, that's why I haven't done it. So I went to the i to <laughs> I was about to call it the iPad store, <laughs> the Apple store, <laughs> the i store. <laughs> yeah, I went to the local Apple store to I I I I was gonna buy an iPad, but I also was gonna play around with some toys. Well, I get there, and there are two police officers outside of the Apple store, and there is a long line. They were at capacity, and the Henrico County Police Department thought that it was appropriate to put police officers there to make sure that it wasn't a giant fire hazard and people, like, coming in and assaulting the geniuses and stealing iPhone 4S, I guess. I I remember when the PS3 went on sale, there was, like, a string of thefts and robberies across the country at midnight at midnight gatherings like people like busting into the stores and running out with ps3s and stuff yeah well this iphone 4s thing uh if you google iphone 4s space disappoint you get 52 (laughs) million hits I checked. Um, I don't know. It seems like every tech blogger and news outlet has been like, oh, this is a huge disappointment. And I think it's basically just a huge disappointment to them because all of their all of their guesses were wrong. But clearly people want this phone. And this place was mobbed with people getting 4S's. So. They expected a piece of Steve Jobs' soul to be embedded in it. Yes, it's iPhone 4S for Steve. For Steve. Oh. Um... Well, anyway, I had to stand in this line, and then I didn't really want to play with any of the toys because it's like, I've been standing in this line for 20 minutes, and I'm blah, 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 first world problems, I'm an American, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, But yeah, I walked in 20 minutes later, had an iPad. It's great. (laughs) It is insanely great. I love it. Um, And Rikari, Rikari, I don't know how to pronounce that. You should should do a little... um, phonetic spelling of that for me so i know how to pronounce it uh he has been on me for weeks about like why yeah. do you want to get a macbook air That's... why do you want an air carter 
and I think I've sufficiently explained myself. And he, I, I got an all caps. Why do I want one over MacBook Pro? Explain yourself. Um, I'm no, I'm not going to. I think I've, I think I've done that sufficiently in previous po- in previous podcasts. I, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to go down that road. I, if if I were to get a MacBook Air, I would prefer it over the 13 inch MacBook Pro because I think that they are comparably equipped. That's that's it. Um, but if if you've been watching me on YouTube, which I don't really do anymore, for the past like six months, I've been trying to make a computer decision. PC versus Mac, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro. Well, I've made my decision, and it's iPad. I just realized that everything I was going to use the MacBook Air for, um, since I'm working so much these days, uh, it would be mostly surfing the web, watching Netflix movies, occasionally checking my email and tweeting. And they have a device for that that's cheaper, lighter, and more portable, and it's called an iPad too. So I just the decision became really obvious to me. And yeah, that's exactly the function I want for for a device that I don't have in my life. Yes. So, uh, and and uh, just having this for a few hours, it's already changed a lot of my behavior. Normally, if I want to do this sort of stuff, I'm either on my phone, and it's just like teeny tiny, and um, Less than four inches in diagonal. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, it's not terribly convenient. Or I have to, like, get up, sit down at my desk on my laptop and do this stuff. But now I can just sort of, like, chill out, you know, in a comfy chair, or be on the couch, or be on my bed, and just, like, do-do-do, doing all this stuff. I don't take my laptop over there because, you know, it's seven pounds. Yeah. <laughs> it's convenient. Yeah, I'm dealing with my laptop, which used to be the server and now just kind of operates as my portable script note taker. Mm -hmm. Um, The battery charger uh, plug does not really work anymore. So I'll just be in the middle of working on it and I think that it's plugged in and all of a sudden it'll just go boom and turn (laughs) off. That's yeah. a fun new problem. That's a fun new problem. Actually, Sean, you've been having lots of problems this week. You want yeah, to... after after we lost part of our podcast last week, and what happened exactly was your wireless dropped for a second, and my recording end, for some reason, kept on recording, but it just recorded nothing, and then I had to restart it when I finally noticed. But then after that, I lost uh, part of a... a MCBOBLP because for some reason Fraps just decided to screw up one of the files. And then I did the second part of Prof Martin's YouTube school and I imported the file into Adobe and it ate it. It ate it like a tape. What? Is that possible in this age? I've never seen that happen before once, but I put in this like 800 megabyte file into adobe it's doing the import process and all of a sudden it said i don't know where that file is and i was like i just gave it to you and i went back to the folder and that file was still there but it was only one megabyte oh my god and i ran undelete i ran through like all these things to try and recover it and i had completely lost it i i don't i can't i don't really understand how that's possible i don't sucks i don't either my computer farted And so what happened was I had recorded the audio separately and I was able to transcribe everything that I had said in this like 15 minute clip and (laughs) re-record it. So halfway through the video, when uh, people see episode two on Monday, my hair will change and everyone will be like, ah, ah, there it is. You you dyed it purple. Right. So the first half is purple and the the second half is my original color. Yeah. Speaking of Prof Martin's, uh, YouTube school. I, I, I like sort of casually left a comment on on your video, but I, I wanted to I wanted to say congratulations and good job. And I think that what you're delivering uh, is is awesome content and useful for people. And it doesn't have to be all whiz bang with <laughs> stuff. And I, I'm you know I'm you're you're teaching people a lesson. If you want to say that you're someone who makes things, you actually have to make them. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you can't just keep putting it off can't keep putting it off so i think uh, i think it's great who did the design on the logo again i've that is bodman he's just a player from our server that's i was awesome. like awesome. i was like do you want anything and he was like just tell people i made it that's fine <laughs> it is bodman you you are epic i i love that logo it is he made that logo and he made the little avatars of me and alicia that sit at the top of my youtube page now people out in the world man you guys are awesome you make me feel like i'm i'm 
<laughs> like, I haven't really done very much with my life. <laughs> You're all awesome. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the ghost of Michael Sarah continues to haunt us. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it, it ends with the, the three. You know, like, they mm. come in rashes of three. I've lost three things this week. Hopefully that's that's it. Well, hopefully this is recording. <laughs> um, It's ticking. It's ticking away. All right. Well, all right. Hopefully that's a good sign. Trust it for now. Hey, I had a question. You had a question? Yeah. What's up? You were, uh, when you were in Colorado, we got to see you uh, walking all the time. Mm -hmm. Do you still get to be a pedestrian in mm -hmm. your new digs? Mm -mm. I, uh, I am currently uh, about seven miles from my work. So. Oh, man. I could. <laughs> I could <laughs> walk it, but it would take me three hours. Well, that's what you've got your iPad for. Yeah, I know. Um, so I was uh, when I was in Chicago on the last day, uh, everyone that I was with, we kind of gathered in one place. It was like 300 people in one place. And um, we were all just having like a love in like, you know, oh, this was great. And we're, we're going to miss everybody. And people were taking. <laughs> I've learned so much here at summer camp. It was great. It was like summer camp. Um, and. <laughs> People were taking pictures. It's like, oh, this is great. And then there were people with iPads holding iPads up and taking pictures with them. I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> I, psh, I don't know. I can't see myself taking pictures or recording vlogs with it, but it's got the camera right there. I'm looking Two at weeks it. from now, Carter's first iPad vlog. I'll, I'll do an iPad vlog. I'll do one just to do it. To demonstrate the power. Mm -hmm. Well, it actually it will be kind of convenient because I have the smart cover and uh, you can prop it up so it's just like looking at you, so you don't have to hold it. You're just you're so set. I am. I really you're am. As happy as a pig in mud. <laughs> Pigs are happy in mud. <laughs> don't they say that down where you are now? I I use the phrase "dilly of a pickle" today, and someone was like, "You are clearly from the Midwest." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh boy okay so uh sean said offline that he's got some mind-blowing thing about minecraft to mention so i'm I, I don't know what he's talking about so what 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 is it what's up with minecraft i was listening to the rooster teeth podcast and bernie burns went to sweden with his son who he claims is the biggest minecraft fan that there is and actually there's a very cute video that him and his son did of uh, the 1.8 update that is basically his his son, his nine year old son, explaining all of the things in the game to Bernie because he doesn't play the game. And uh, so they went to Sweden. They met Notch. They had a lovely time with him. He said when he gives tours of their building, like it's like a half hour of like, OK, it was nice to meet you. We're going to get back to work now. And he said, well, he was over there. Notch like. Every time they would be like, okay, we'll get out of your hair, Notch would be like, oh, no, let's go to lunch. Or, oh, no, let me show you the whatever. And so they ended up there for five hours. Whoa. So Notch took five hours out of his programming day to show these two around, first of all. And second, this was this happened to be the day that he was putting Enderman into the game. Uh huh. And he was leading Endermen around. He was showing them how that when you looked at them, they would start following you. And he said he needed them to have a weakness, and he wasn't sure what it should be. Bernie's nine-year-old son said, how about they are weakened by water? Really? Yes. Really? So that attribute of Enderman that everyone seems to think is the thing that is stupidest about them was suggested by a nine-year-old kid, just spur of the moment, like no experience with any, any, any of it. Just uh, that's why that's in there. Not, not to say anything bad about Bernie's nine-year-old son, but what that also tells us is that Notch is a nine-year-old. <laughs> he thought it was a good idea. <laughs> And I, I mean, Bernie was telling that story not to be like, and in the end, my kid's thing went into the game. He was just telling everyone how nice Notch was and everything. And I'm sure he is. But does he have a plan? Is there like, does he think ahead about what he's doing <laughs> at all? I, I don't know. Dragons are in the game now. Woo! Yeah, dragons are in the game. There's, I'm sure I'm using this wrong, um, but there's a term in programming called spaghetti code. It's like usually novice programmers end up making spaghetti code. It's just like 
yeah, stuff that goes like in and around on itself and it, you know it's like they don't know how to structure a program successfully so that it just like works yeah it seems like minecraft seems very spaghetti cody to me like just like why does it do this and why do we have to do that and they, they're just like adding things just like let's put this in let's put that in let's have let's have it do this. it's like the reason that they have to keep modifying things like oh fences should stack like we've we've released seven updates where they haven't stacked but we should have done that like a really long time ago that kind of stuff yeah totally so yeah that really blew my mind that's a little mind-blowing <laughs> How many other things are in there that was like someone's really crappy idea that Notch was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, they should do that. <laughs> Zombies should drop feathers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe he has a whole like. Tolkien Actually, I saw the reason that they did. Oh, why? They dropped feathers because arrows were in the game, but chickens were not. Arrows were in the game, but chickens were not. You could shoot arrows from bows, so you needed to be able to make arrows, and for arrows you need a feather. And there were no chicken mobs in the game. So they needed to have them come from somewhere, so they had zombies drop them. That's... But for some reason, again, when Same. they added chickens, they should have removed the feathers from the zombies, and they didn't for such a long time. You know, I'm gonna... I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna invoke my Steve Jobs card right now, the Apple card. Do it. Someone's got to do it for him. What I would, what I wish that they would do or have or had done at any point during this beta process was say, "This is we're done. We may add stuff in the future, but we're done. We're gonna keep it in beta, and then we're just going to iterate and cl clean it up, clean it up, clean it up, and then release that. Not like let's put the Nether in, let's put this in, let's have." this complicated m mechanic and each of these things seem like things that are just added like they had a they had an afternoon where they didn't know what to do yeah it's and like they, they just add a whole new component uh, yeah i just I, I i wish they i wish that they would not do this well and they said that they were gonna lock it and then um not not release anything until they they actually had the gold master or whatever they whatever you call it in gaming um that they'll release at minecon yeah and then Notch was like, nah, never mind. We're just going to keep adding things. <laughs> They're not going to lock it. I, 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 that I read that they've just decided, let's keep adding things. Dragons, why not? They're awesome. Ugh. Ugh. Very frustrating. Very frustrating. And they're making millions off of it. That's probably why they're doing it. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm... Who can blame them? I know. I know. Um... Ah, oh, boy. It always comes back to Minecraft and Apple. <laughs> That's exactly what Notch wants you to think. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we, 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 we forgot to, uh, to mention this, but uh, sh like, hey, hey, audience and Sean, do things sound a little bit different from the past couple episodes? No Ooh, buzzing? There's no, there's no sound no, when no. we stop talking. Yeah, yeah, we figured out the buzzing. No thanks to all of you, Bobby, Ron. <laughs> yeah, no one figured this out. We figured it out by accident. Because, of course, that was the way it was going to happen. Of course. So, all right, everybody Wanna be quiet. Can I kick that into effect? Yeah? All right, I'm going to turn buzzing on. It's like a, a meditation sound now. Yeah, just... Just be saying, you know, just just so this is your last chance to guess out loud what what that sound might be. Yeah. Yeah. You could tweet us S E H P. Like, what do you think? What's the cause? What's doing this? OK, you ready? Buzzing off. Is uh, it off? It is off. Power cord. Power. It's electric current. Mm -hmm. None of you figured it out. None of y'all. I called Carter and I didn't hear it and I didn't even think about it. And then all of a sudden it just turned on and I was like, what did, what just happened? He was like, I didn't do anything. I just plugged my power cord in. And I was like, unplug it full power cord. So uh, there is now a maximum length of the podcast. It's the amount of time <laughs> of my laptop fully charged can go. So if Carter's feeling like having a short week, he's only going to have like 30% battery when we start. Yeah, exactly. So, <sighs> that's funny we're vindicated I, I i like i feel like a weight has been lifted because i listen to i i listen to the podcast at least once to you know 
listen to all the times I say the wrong thing and try and <laughs> try and be better. Uh, <laughs> and I have been so terribly annoyed and just felt unprofessional. <laughs> just like, what? Oh, that buzzing. Well, we figured it out. I was able to clean it up last week with a little bit of Ron's help. Yes. Ron he suggested help. the noise remover tool in Audacity, and that, that did the job. Yes. Thank you, Ron. But now we don't need that. If Ron wants to know, what is it? If alien life forms are monitoring Earth and only for some reason YouTube, what would they think? Yes. <laughs> there is an awful lot of news on YouTube. Like actual news. Yeah, but you know, if you were so if they're totally alien, then I don't know. But if they're just like us, but they're not from Earth. You know, they have our rationality. They don't have some sort of crazy different way of looking at the world. Wouldn't one of the things you do is like, well, let's do like a uh an analysis of like what types of things are on YouTube and how much of them there are. Right. To see like right. what we think these people, what what's important to them. And they would be okay. like, oh, what's important to them are like uh, cute cats. Um, <laughs> Dancing montages. Uh, you know, uh, Minecraft <laughs> apparently is very <laughs> important to this society. Um, Rick Astley. Yeah, 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 totally. Um, and... It seems it's that everybody on the planet Earth points a camera at themselves and talks about their day. <laughs> this is what people do. And about that trip to Walmart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're just highly involved in each other's lives. That's what they would think. Exactly. Exactly. So I guess that's what they, what they would think. I don't know. What do you think, Ron? What, what, what do... Uh... We need a Douglas Adams viewpoint on this. Like, yeah. are they going to show up and think that the cars are people? <laughs> right. Right. I don't know. I don't rightly know. So I don't know. I do appreciate Ron's random questions. Yes, Ron's random questions. It's the RRQ. <laughs> if you want to ask a random question, <laughs> tweet us uh, hashtag SCHP and also hashtag RRQ. <laughs> We'll, we'll see what else shows up in that category. <laughs> exactly. Actually, you know what I've found so far is that the the Twitter is has been a lot more successful for communications with us than email. So, who uses email? Who uses- I you know what I kind of use my email account as a filtering device. If I don't, if people don't want to take the time to email me, then I think that they're not worth talking to, <laughs> <laughs> and it works. That's the barrier to entry. <laughs> Yes, it totally works. The people who are worthwhile to talk to do email me, and then I talk to them. Well, there you go. My my my. I don't have an outward facing email other than Sean and Carter because stay away from me. I don't want you. I don't want people talking to me. <laughs> Just tweet at me. That's how I'll communicate. Um. All right. So we got one more piece of follow up. Promised follow up, and that's the uninvited. I did watch it. Not awful? No. If it was its own thing, its own film, I'd say it's a pretty decent horror movie. Probably one of the one of the better horror movies of 2009. Okay, cool. Yeah. However, <laughs> since they were purportedly, supposedly trying to do a remake of a Tale of Two Sisters, they failed epically. Epic fail! Was I right? Were the girls, like, a little bit older... Yeah, a little bit, but yeah, and yes, the ending has changed, which I find very annoying, but they made more, like, systemic changes that I found to be more egregious, and the biggest one is the Suyan stand-in, the dead girl, Yeah. in this movie, Emily Browning's sister, she is the stronger, more... To get like together leader role, not oh, Sumi. Okay. Yeah, it's not the Sumi character is not shows how much I was paying attention. I don't even remember their names. Um, <laughs> the American ones, the American Sumi and the American Sumi. Um, 
<laughs> the American singing, <laughs> Emily Browning, she is the weak one who needs protection from her sister. And I guess you could say that that's like, oh, well, you know, she's using her her dissociative identity as a crutch, you know, for herself. But it was very different in the original. Yeah. She was, you know, she was carving out a role for herself of protecting her sister. Right. Exactly. Um, and part of the reason why she was doing that was because she was in some way responsible for her death. Although in this one, she was really responsible for her death. <laughs> she was primarily responsible. Um, had some good scares. Uh, Elizabeth Banks was pretty did, good. Did it, did it have like a, a bloody bag being dragged across the floor or was that completely gone? Um, that, n- n- yeah, that was gone, but they had, uh, they had other things. Okay. They had, um, the girl under the sink thing was still there. Although okay. in this one, the girl under the sink like talks and does, like does lots of stuff. She's <laughs> um, got a whole scene. Yeah. It's like, what the girl under the sink scene? And it's not under a sink. It's under an oven. So psh, America. Oh, okay. Gah. Um, but before she, um. The lead up to that is she's taking trash out, and there, there's a big bag, and the bag moves. And you think that there's going to be... It's a... it's a, They were Indian-given. Oh, can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> they, well, that's probably... Enough. Well, you just did. Um, they, were, they tricked you. Is that racist? I think it is. Sorry. Sorry, I won't say that. I take it back. Um, you think that there's going to be something creepy in the bag, and it's just like a can of soup. And then she gets the can of soup, and it's the dead girl under the stove. <laughs> okay. So I would give it a, like, a 7 out of 10 on its own, and, like, a 4 out of 10 as a remake. Yeah, sometimes I, I wish that they just wouldn't even bother trying to say that it was a remake. Just, like, we had inspiration. Adaptation. Yeah, we had inspiration from this movie. We were, we're going to go in a different direction. It's not a remake. Come. And you know what else isn't a remake? Hmm. American Horror Story, which I started and you have not. I'd be curious if our, any of our audience members have watched. Me too. Me too. I will be. The first two episodes have been on. I've watched them both. I will be watching them uh, after this, essentially. I would say um, the the Twin Peaks kind of feeling definitely holds up mm-hmm. through the first two episodes, at least. Um, Twin Peaks, the supernatural stuff doesn't really make itself shine until later. In the series, like it becomes very clear there is some kind of supernatural element. This one's pretty upfront. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like right there. Cool, cool. Definitely scary though. Alicia has been jumpy. Really? Yeah. Cool. I mean, I mean, I'm not scared, but you know, girl scared. I'm not scared. <laughs> Sean's a strong man. I'm not scared. That's right. Uh, I'm just like the guy in the series who won't be scared by the house dylan what's his name yeah what's his name dylan what's his name um yeah i'm, I'm excited to see it i've been looking forward to it all of my geeky horror friends have been talking about it and i've been like blah 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 blah, blah, blah. don't tell me i haven't seen it yet so good yes we will talk about it next week faux show but what we're talking about this week is not american horror story it's we're, we're gonna get to red state but we have to do a detour to read Hastings, our another biggest, another our, Netflix detour. He's our biggest fan, I would say. He's definitely our biggest source of of entertainment for our podcast. <laughs> oh boy! So Sean, what's going on? With, what's what? What did they do wrong this week? <laughs> nothing. Still nothing. They've still done nothing. <laughs> They've done nothing. They made one change ever, and it's just been a an avalanche of misspeakings and taking things back ever since yeah so this week we all got an email like we did two weeks ago from reed although i don't think this one was signed by him i think this no one it was, was not Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> he was like i'm going on vacation yes so they're they're quickster that didn't happen that never happened to you guys that was like a bad that was like a bad dream <laughs> yeah they were like you don't still remember when we sent that didn't do, do you and we were like yeah we we all were waiting to register accounts at quickster.com and they were like oh um yeah we were drunk <laughs> <laughs> so, so forget about that uh, so i have this bloomberg article that's basically 
a lot of stuff happened with Netflix this week, and so they did kind of like a wrap up. Um, they're getting new content. They they wrap some new content deals, particularly with um, CW. So if you like Gossip Girl, it's gonna be on Netflix. Woohoo! Woo-hoo. Um, and then they had some like bad quarterly numbers to talk about, possibly related to a lot of the changes they've made. And then they have you know, and then they did this Quickster thing. So uh, one of the one of the executives there. Uh, he uh this is his quote um you can move too quickly and you can upset a lot of people which is what we did with quickster so move quickly back in the opposite direction then netflix yeah exactly um the article uh sagely points out that Netflix Netflix failed to take into account the convenience of a single website and login as well as the customer's emotional attachment <laughs> You what think? is there an actual emotional attachment to the Netflix website? I, I I get the convenience factor, sure. I mean, I I don't think to you know the website as a website, but I I barely even think about the website. Most of my watching I do on a device, which I don't even like. I don't go to the website for. Right. Well, I. I, I think that, you know, if there's any, um, you know, emotional resonance, it's over just, I get my DVDs from Netflix. Like, I've been doing this for 10 years, and why are you making these changes that I don't understand? And that poor guy on Twitter, did you hear that there's a Twitter account for Quickster that is not, it's just some dude? No. <laughs> the Twitter account Quickster, spelled the way that they wanted it, is just a guy that's just his personal account. And so uh, the morning that I saw that Quickster was gone, Patton Oswald had retweeted someone saying, like, does this mean I have to unfollow Quickster now? I was kind of liking that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't hear that. Um, so I, I don't think I don't think your dad knows we're recording, but he just tweeted at me. He just called me. I wasn't going to mention it. Um, what does he want? <laughs> he, he want he, he's, he's just letting me know that he bought some more Apple stock last week. Okay, he was, I'm sure he was calling to tell me that. Um, <laughs> well, it, Andy, uh, when did you buy it? When the stock fell, or did or when? It, it's been the highest it's ever been on Friday. Uh, so hopefully he got it on whatever on Wednesday when it when it dropped. It dropped like five percent. Nice. In the wake of the, <laughs> I guess people make a big deal out of this. Like if you follow Apple, you you expect this. Whenever they do a product launch, their stock falls a little bit, and then two days later, it's higher than it's ever been. It just like like clockwork. That's how the market treats Apple. I don't know why it goes down like that. I think mostly it's people have analysts who don't understand how apple works they all have these expectations that are always they have that different. disappointment pang every time yeah so they're like oh you know they then they advise all of their clients you know oh yeah apple you know they made a bad they made a bad decision on this and people sell off their stock and then two days later it's like oh they sold a million of these iphone 4s i think we need some more i want some of that apple stock <laughs> <laughs> so uh uh cool Thank you, Andy. You may, but if uh, he just wanted to get in on the podcast, to, yeah, we generally record on Saturdays these these days. So if you want to tweet out, that wasn't us, really in. That wasn't the plan, but that's the way it, it's been going. Sort of working that way. If you want to, if you want to make it on the on the episode, you can tweet at me, or Sean, while we're when you think we might be recording, and we might mention you. He was actually replying to a tweet that I put out there that. Um, at the Apple store, I had to wait a little bit. Your tweet get... that says, Apple's the best, I love Apple, I want to marry them? Yes, that tweet. I uh, saw that tweet. That's basically, um, that's all of my tweets, just variations on that theme. They gave me smart water while I was waiting. <laughs> they were just Communists. Like, <laughs> Whatever, man. It's like, oh yeah, we gotta, <laughs> we're going to have to wait a little bit for your iPad. Would you like a smart water? I'm like, sure. Do you have a... <laughs> Do you have any herbal tea or uh, massage? I'm just picturing like a bunch of clerks wearing Steve Jobs turtlenecks. <laughs> you know the company that makes those turtlenecks sold out of them the day after Steve Jobs passed away. Oh, that's kind of adorable. Yeah, I know. I don't think I don't know who can get away with that. We'll we'll move on to red state here. I promise. But I just <laughs> this out here. There. So Steve intentionally wore that as a uniform. He wore it every day. Yes, I, I read a little bit about this. He wanted to have an actual uniform for Apple. 
Did you read this? I I read that. That was the all the further I read. Because he was visiting some Japanese companies, and a lot of them have uniforms. Japanese corporate culture is very different from American cor- corporate culture. Yes. It's all it's like your big family or a village or you know it's different yeah what's that wait what's that uh michael keaton movie michael where he goes out where he learns how to how to build an auto plant like they do in japan uh, come on uh, i don't know google to the rescue are you googling it so i, uh, I michael keaton i don't know batman was it batman i think it was batman <laughs> <laughs> um so Steve wanted to have a uniform too and he had a he had some demos of it mocked up. It was such a horribly 90s uniform. It was it was just a top I think and you you could wear jeans or whatever, but the top was a a colored nylon zip-up jacket that ha- that you could zi- that had zippers on the arms so you could take the sleeves off and turn it into a <laughs> nylon colored vest well obviously when he got to the pants they were going to be uh those zip off long cargo pants so that you could turn shorts into pants yeah exactly or maybe like hammer pants (laughs) which i don't call mc hammer pants i call them aladdin pants because he was that's what aladdin totally wore um so (laughs) so that michael keaton movie is also a ron howard movie Mm mm-hmm so shame on us for not knowing the title. It's called Gung Ho. I can't say that I've seen it. I know I watched it in school. It's also got John Turturro in it. John and Turturro. He's great. He's, I love him. He, he just crops up in movies and you're like, oh, John Turturro's in this movie. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we watched uh, uh, right before we saw you in D.C. The night before we saw you, we watched uh, Do the Right Thing. And he's that's one of his earliest roles. And even then, you can tell, like, he's really good. Yeah, I, uh, I approve of him. He, he's very, he's like a younger, um, uh, Robert Duvall. Robert Duvall is just, like, in movies, and you're like, oh, Robert Duvall's in this movie. And you're like, oh, look, he's awesome, like, in Seabiscuit. And you're like, right. what is Robert Duvall doing in this movie? And you're like, I don't know, but he's great. I don't know, but he's lighting up the screen with brilliance. <laughs> oh, boy. Just like, um... Just like John Goodman. Just like John Goodman. Uh, yeah, I tweeted about that um, because I thought he looked so bad in Red State, which we're talking about now. You better all have seen Red State. This is... It's winning some awards, man. Yeah, it's definitely worth a watch. And it's short, so um, length is not going to be an excuse on yeah. this one. Hour 26 or something like that? Yeah. Pretty short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, very different movie from... <laughs> everything i thought this was kind of like jersey girl (laughs) really yeah everything (laughs) was really messed up everything was really messed up (laughs) did you did you like jersey girl no okay good Uh, i thought it was terrible i I spent money to see that in a theater too i was upset i didn't i did not that was one of those ones that i waited till it came out on dvd and then i was like okay so i'm glad that i didn't long story short Jersey Girl definitely could be Kevin Kevin Smith's worst movie. Uh, he will tell you it is. Oh, he said that. <laughs> he hates that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't know that. It blew up in his face in the wake of Benefer. That was the whole problem with it. Yeah, it just didn't work at all. I mean, I wish they had. I mean, I could have done with a total rewrite of the story that just focused on the granddaughter and uh, the grand the granddad. That was probably the, would have been a better movie. That was the only interesting part of that entire movie for me personally. <laughs> Red this State, movie, Red State, very different, very, very, very different. Um, when I was talking to Sean about this offline, I used the word um, inflama- inflammatory many times. <laughs> um, I was going to tweet this, but I saved it for the podcast because I didn't want a permanent text record of this haunting me for the rest of my life. Every scary movie about a, a religious cult is really just about Christianity and they don't have the balls to say it's Christianity and this one is. <laughs> <laughs> and they do a pretty good job of distancing it from any form of Christianity that like you would see on your street. Like they they say like these guys don't even 
they're not even associated with people who would run with the neo-nazis they distance themselves from this group I that's how that, insane they are I, I thought that that civics class opening was like so ham fisted <laughs> i thought it was pretty 80s horror yeah yeah i can see that but i i i wasn't really having it i was like oh, come on let's let's get past this and they did quickly so i was pleased yeah it had the kid from the new nightmare movie he's like in all these movies he's good at being scared he's good at looking like he's scared which he did in this he did yeah that was the most unbelievable plot i i can i can conceive three three teenage kids who are gonna hook up with some like 40 year old lady that they um, met on an app yeah i guess in the middle of uh bum whatever wherever where did they live i don't know i don't either was it mentioned maybe it was in per maybe it was purposely not mentioned mm, it's any, just some generic any midwestern state uh yeah anywhere usa i don't know i'll, I'll look it up but yeah Right in the middle. Yeah. And then there's that one person who's well, on maybe that. there's just nothing to do around there. And, you know, that's what you do on a Friday night. Go on <laughs> Craigslist and uh, find some bored woman in a trailer. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I, I thought that that was wholly unbelievable, but all the rest. But it led to, like, great action afterwards. So. Right. The, the, the like all of the setup for the film takes place in the first 20 minutes and it takes place on one day and then there's like a solid break there's a black screen and then there's a time printed on the screen it was like 5 40 in the morning or something then like the second part of the movie begins with john goodman waking up getting the call like situation is <laughs> it's a snafu and we need to call in the big guns yeah um, he's the atf guy right because the local the local yokels uh, predictably are not up to the task of dealing with this highly armed. Um, they <laughs> mention the Westboro church yes. specifically. And it's like, Oh, yeah. it's like, Oh, is this a Westboro church? Or like, Oh no, it's like that, but with guns. It's worse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We're not worried about those guys. They're a lot of talk. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> when they were in the trailer, like, I, I was just like, why are you guys being so stupid? When she opens the door to get them beer, the tops were already off. <laughs> I'm like, why are you accepting some drink from a stranger? And she didn't even open it in front of you. <laughs> You've been a 17 year old Carter. You weren't stupid about some things. I was this. This movie did make me think of my time in high school and like stu and stupid things that I did. <laughs> None of so, which were related to 38. You want to go in more detail about that? Uh, we'll do that on the after dark. Um, <laughs> link in the info. <laughs> um, so yeah, I could relate to them. Not in the fact, not in the like specifics of their actions, but just being like you know a 17 year old guy and getting into trouble. Uh. This was ramped up to 11. Um, and then it's like, <laughs> that's sort of like a a little moral of the story. Don't do those stupid things, 17 year old kids. You might get you might get wrapped in sor in saran wrap and shot. <laughs> yeah, just, uh, you know, go go get to second base with everyone else. Don't don't worry about the home run. Yeah, I'm looking at the Wikipedia. It, do it does not say where this took place. I that's probably why it's called red state yeah totally um yeah uh no state wants to be associated no with the action of this film michael parks great performance as... terrifying oh oh my goodness he smith made sure that um he followed the oscar voting rules for this so he had to release it for two weeks in la in order to get it to be official like it is a contender if uh any nominations are possible yeah he did a one week run in quentin tarantino's theater that's it yeah mm -hmm. and then because of course tarantino has a theater in la of course he does of course he does. <laughs> and he would do he would totally do this for 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 a buddy yeah they're friends yeah um and if you didn't watch this i don't know how i i i, I say like let's not there's not a lot to spoil, but let's not really spoil it. You should watch this. 
Um, it's four ninety nine in iTunes. It's on on demand. It's out there. It's available. You, you should definitely this. This is a movie to check out. At and if very, you've ever seen Clerks, you'll never believe it's from the same guy. I'll never believe it. Yeah. Um, Shot by the same guy as well. Hmm. Same DP. He's come a long way. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that was the, the, the thing about this that I didn't think that they got quite right was it, it, it was very, it was very scary, but I just thought it was, um, it was, it was too different from a horror movie, the way that it was shot and put together, I thought, which made it really, it felt, it felt more modern thriller than horror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The horror ended when the bullets started flying. Like then it went to just it went from a horror film to a to a thriller that was just really tense. Yeah, no, that's that's true. And I mean, oh, oh, I don't want to spoil it, but there's in the falling action in the as the third act is winding up uh, and the ATF is like totally, you know, guns blazing. There there is a moment uh, with one of our heroes where. I was just, it's just one of those moments that films can make, you know, make me feel like, oh no, no, no. Like that is so wrong. Like, I, th why? I think I know what you're talking about. And <laughs> I think everyone else will if yeah. they've seen it. It's just like, you know, it's like in uh, Order of the Phoenix or, or, you know, it's just like when you're like when, reading the book, we talked about this, just like that, like empathy that you feel toward the character. Like, no, no, this is so unfair. Yeah. I, that, yeah, that got me that like, it was it was it was very well put together this film yeah it has a great ending too good job smith good job kevin smith you pulled it off he's he's pretty proud of it <laughs> he should be he should be i just hope that you know really crazy fundamentalist christians uh don't you know start targeting kevin smith because of this movie that he made well they well the westboro baptist church already has they they protested most of the screenings of the film that he did around their area well they're they're just they're they're nut jobs <laughs> they they don't have guns they don't have guns yeah exactly. do, do these groups really exist in compounds across america this makes me think more of uh kind of survivalists not like yeah, necessarily Christians, yeah. you know, like like uh, Waco and yeah, like when John Goodman wakes up, he's talking about the reason that he knows all this stuff about them is because like arms dealers like cued the ATF in and said like, hey, this group in whatever was looking for <laughs> Soviet rifles, blah blah blah, and there are probably sects in America that the ATF really does know like who has these certain firearms somewhere. Well, it's <laughs> this is somewhat related incident in Ohio uh, that a lot of, do you read like Slate? No. Um, they're, a, they're a website uh, that does articles. They're related to the Washington Post. They do, there's there's like, a, I, I think there's a hashtag on Twitter called Slate Pitches. It's always like some, like taking two seemingly unrelated events and trying <laughs> to tie them together in a like, you know, thoughtful way kind of deal. Um, I believe they did this article and other people have been talking about the rise of um, uh, fundamentalist re uh, religious violence in the world. And mm -hmm. they've been comparing um, stuff going on in the Middle East to an incident in Ohio that some people heard. It got some national attention. It, uh, an Amish group. A lot of Amish in Ohio. Sean probably knows about the Amish. Us too. Us too. Sean knows about the Amish. Plenty of them in Pennsylvania. Uh there, a group of Amish men broke into several other Amish houses in this community and shaved the men in those houses because they felt that they weren't living like a true Amish, like to the Amish, you know, moral code. And you're only supposed to have a beard uh, when you're Amish after you've had children and you're like the responsible elder father. They like yeah. broke into these houses and shaved people, which sounds a little ridiculous, but it is probably, I mean, if you were just asleep and someone shows up with a, <laughs> like a blade and starts, you know, like shaving your face, you'd probably be pretty scared. Do they call the Amish police? 
Uh, I think that they just call the regular police. They better not call oh. the police from Red State because they're terrible. Call John. <laughs> not, yeah. not. Oh, the and the sheriff was. Well, I I don't know his real name, but um. Milton from Milton the, from, from the office, office space. Yeah. yeah. Office space, who I love. Um. Yeah. Boy. The other cop uh, is from um, Breaking Bad. The the guy who got who showed up first. Gotcha. Gotcha. So yeah, check it out. Check it out. We liked it. We liked it. Um, and I think Sean and I will both also see, and we'll see if we like, the new Paranormal Activity movie coming out. But uh, that will not be the movie that we talk about next week, because it's coming out on Friday. <laughs> no one will have any time to see it. Before yeah, we... that's cutting it too close. So we were batting around ideas for what the next movie's going to be. Sean, Sean had a had the good idea that it should be classic, something classic. How, how classic though? I know. So that's the question. Like, retro can mean a lot of things. This is like a movie from the seventies, like Last House on the Left, like the original Wes Craven one, or which was based on an Ingmar Bergman film. Yes, it was. Uh, do you know the name? I'm no. the name. Something Spring. Virgin Ingmar Spring. Bergman film. Virgin Spring. It was a Virgin Spring. Um. Yes. I can pull that stuff out. Uh, I haven't. You're seen... enough of a Woody Allen fil- uh, fan to know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so should we go back to there? Uh, should we like classic, as in like the new age of mo- of uh, of horror classic, like Halloween or you know like Friday the Thirteenth Part Two or something? Or should we go way back, like Universal classic? Nosferatu. Nosferatu. I've never seen Nosferatu. I've seen Nosferatu. You have? Yep. Um, there was a film club, uh, the one semester at college, our film club did like a overview of horror and they, they pretty much did like one from each decade. Mm -hmm. And I think the first one was Nosferatu. Probably. probably. And then they also showed, um, later there's a eighties or nineties movie with, uh, it's like, uh, I can't shadow of the vampires. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Willem Dafoe. Is it Willem Dafoe? Willem Dafoe plays Max Schreck, who's the guy who played Nosferatu, who in their movie is an actual vampire. (laughs) It, um, it's very good. Uh, I, I have seen that. Uh, it's excellent. Uh, It also has, uh, John Malkovich and, uh, in a small role, but, um, a fun one, Eddie Izzard. Oh my gosh, I don't remember that at all. He's the other actor. He's the, like, the... That's right! Yeah, he's the, like, real pale other actor who yes. has to deal with Max Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I've, I have seen both of those, and I would, I would recommend both of those to anyone who's interested. I've seen Shadow of the Vampire and would recommend it, and I should probably see um, Nosferatu. I'm That's not... one of those ones you just you gotta like just appreciate it. You're not gonna be like, what a great movie. <laughs> uh, You're just gonna like recognize where it where the starting point was that they were coming from. Well, I'll tell you this, uh, audience, it is available streaming on Netflix. Really? I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Netflix thinks that I would give it a four point four. Okay. Out of five, they think I'm gonna like it. Um, what I like looking at on Netflix is not what it thinks I'm going to rate a movie. It's the difference between what um, everyone has rated it versus what they and what you would like. Mm-hmm. So the it. average is three point six, but they think I would give it a four point four. So they think right. I'm going to like it more than most people. I should find out which movies it thinks I'm going to hate that the rating, the popular rating, is better. Yeah, th- that would be an interesting list. There's very interesting things with Netflix. They're dealing with a ton of data uh and they call there's this this famous uh problem of theirs called the the napoleon dynamite problem (laughs) (laughs) i like it already uh so they want to have better and better algorithms to predict what people will think about movies based on the ratings that they give and the ratings that other people have given and they are they run into problems with like these inflection points uh of movies that are very um, uh, that people's reactions to them are very polar. Like, you love it or you hate it. Okay. So, like, um, a, for me, for example, 
Uh, I think Netflix thinks I would really like Napoleon Dynamite because of other movies that I really liked, but I hated that movie. <laughs> hate, hate, hate. Can't even begin to describe how much I dislike that movie. Um, so part Whatever of like, I feel like doing, gosh. Ew, I hate that movie so much. Um, and other movies like that, you like indie movies like that usually. Uh, so that that yeah, that that's a huge. Um, those so we're watching Napoleon Dynamite is what I'm getting. That's that would be a horror movie for me. <laughs> I so the not Nosferatu, probably not something real modern either. Probably not like Halloween, right? Yeah, I would aim for like seventies. Seventies? You want to do a seventies horror movie? Yeah. All right. That's fine with me. You got? Do you do you, do you got one in mind? No, no, no. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, neither do I. So we will not announce it on the podcast because we'll, we're, we're going to have to we're gonna have to brainstorm a little bit. But we'll uh, we'll tweet it. With we're going to throw it to the to the people. Sure, you will take some feedback, whatever, and then we'll watch it. But it, I I'm probably going to insist that it be on streaming. So so check your Netflix instant for both of us. Yes, and let us know. And if all else fails, we can do Last House on the Left, which I like a lot. And that is on streaming. Good question. Uh, <laughs> house on the left, not the new one, which I have seen, and it was okay, but... Mm. It is. It is on streaming. It is? Okay, great. The so, new one is not, actually. Interesting. It's on On Demand. That's where I saw it. All right, so... Alicia and I watched uh, Heavenly Creatures this week, which looks like a horror movie, but it's not. <laughs> How'd you like it? It was really good. Uh, it's a early 90s Peter Jackson movie, which is based on the true story of two girls who plot to murder one of their mothers really that was his that was his transition movie wasn't it that... it totally and it totally was it was it's clear he wrote it with his wife and he directed it and it's really good interesting i should check not that. a horror film though no yeah uh if you don't know the story on peter jackson he did like all these really trashy gore horror movies in in new zealand and then i think heavenly creatures he did and that's when he became like a real director on Wikipedia, it's referred to as his splatter period. His splatter. I've seen several of those movies. They're great, but they're not. <laughs> they're not. They're the, not Lord of the Rings. They're not Lord of the Rings, and they're certainly not The Frighteners, which are a very underrated movie that he directed in the '90s, which was awesome. I love it. And I've never heard of. Never heard of it. Michael J. Fox what? is a, a medium, and he to to make his to make his way in the world to make his money. He. Uh, has ghost friends who will like do a haunting at people's houses and then he goes there and like pretends to get rid of the haunting and then people pay him he's just a fraud he's a con man yeah but he actually can see ghosts and communicate he's with a ghost them. con man mm -hmm, exactly and then the movie sort of plays with that and uh um it's it's great it had really great special effects for when it came out now it's kind of looks a little dated it's no terminator 2 it is no terminator 2 they didn't spend a hundred million bajillion dollars on it though either. All right, so we need a we need a film, but we will figure that out. And if you don't know, I, I'll probably post it on the video as soon as we know what it is, because I'll put this up on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I'll put it in the info. In the info. So yeah, that's 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 what we got this week. Tweet at us. Well, not at us. <laughs> Tweet using the hashtag SCHP. Watch American Horror Story if you are interested. And send us suggestions of 1970s horror movies. Got a lot of homework this week. I like assigning homework. You do. And make sure that you check out Prof. Martin's YouTube School uh, episode 2, which is coming out on Monday. Yep. Do it. Cool, man. Sean and Carter had a podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Carter. Okay. So I, it, we'll talk with Michael Sarah. Okay, should I have buzzing on when we start or buzzing off? <laughs> Do you think that you can keep your power unplugged the whole time? Yeah, I've, or is I've, that dangerous? I have 63% as long as I'm it's turned the yet. power. It's just the sound of the electric current. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the strangest thing. I'm just turning the. I'm just turn, like turning everything way down. Yeah, let's start with it not buzzing, and then we'll do this thing. <laughs> okay.